Oh, hello, uh, another update. Um, I did get a pressure sense, as you can tell by the uh, screen right there. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to zoom in here. We can actually read pressure now. Um, I used a different sensor. I used an MPX 5010DP. Uh, and... Uh, or the part of the code to integrate it, and it's not mounted on the uh, circuit board. I had to take it off. You can see to the far left here that some headers moving away. I'll get to that in a little bit here, but uh, works very well. Uh, came via AliExpress from China. Um, the sensor that the uh, event group uses is still on back order. I have an order in for that too, but I ordered a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, and the uh, MPX one is a uh, really robust sensor. I mean, it has a nice, I'm trying to put this in without blocking. This is actually uh, MPX 510DP. Uh, it's an uncompensated uh, non-temperature corrected unamplified one. So you can use this one too if you want to build an op-amp circuit to amplify it. I was in the middle of it and then the other one came in the mail. So it was the... Uh, no brainer, just use the one that has three wires versus having to make another circuit board. And it seems to be dead on. I compared it. Uh, let's see if I can get both the gauges in there. So, what you see is uh, peak pressure. That is, uh, well, you see 18. Now it has a high pressure resist because I use it then too. But let me go silence it. That's probably okay. There you go. Let me just get in. So you'll see the uh, the pressure curve where the wave goes up and reaches that peak inspiratory pressure. Then it comes back down, plateau for one tenth of a second, and that's the uh, next lower number you read. And then it drops down to the uh, peep. Let me see. Paused her. The ex uh, expiratory pressure at the end. Uh, where we manually dial that in via the peep valve down there. So that's a manually set in. We just read it off of here. And uh, and also this with this, we can also use uh, assist reading. Uh, we can set that up by... Uh, I'm going to move this. Let me zoom out back again. So we would dial that in. If that drops, so I have two, there you go, two centimeters of, uh, let me just confirm it so the blinking goes off. If it drops two uh, centimeters of uh, H2O below the peak pressure, so at eight, it would trigger a cycle. So that's simulating, well, initiating as a person taking a breath. So, uh, if a person doesn't take a breath, it'll give a breath cycle uh, by the set respiratory rate. And uh, that function as well, I can maybe show that to you later. I'm not going to hook up a mask because I didn't want to, but I can just lift, I just put an iPad on my simulated lung there, which is just a glove. And uh, that, oops, you get in over there and I can show you some data logging real quick. Let me go zoom in to here so you can see a little bit more. Okay, let's go with the, um, that's dirty, uh, due to this, uh, hooked up to the serial monitor, you have the uh, GPU clock, the uh, start cycle clock, uh, tidal volume that's encoded position, so, and uh, then we have the, uh, Let's see, we have that's the uh, pit, that's the uh, peak pressure. That's the, uh, let's see, I have it set to 10 breaths a minute, so it's six seconds and four hundredths of a second, five hundredths of a second. And uh, let's see, what do we have? That's the, uh, oh, that's the buffer right there. This is the am, milliamps and milliamps that the motor is drawing. So when it goes to zero, that's basically at its peak rolling back. 
That's the pip. It's now at 10.252. And that's the high pressure alarm. It's not off. So, uh, so it's very nice. Monitors very uh, nicely. Um, you go back into the... Uh, into here. Whoops. There we go. Back in there. There we go. So let me just get that set up. Let me just disconnect the uh, serial port here, cable. Okay. So the pressure sensor is. See, it. it's just mounted right there again. That's an MPX uh, 5010 DP. Uh, it's larger of port sizes than the original one that uh, the event group uses, and that's on the motherboard. I just took some wires uh, from a header, thought it in a header instead because I don't have the other sense and I want to continue testing. Uh, these ports, I think, are like four millimeters versus the. Uh, Honeywell one that was specified on that uh, host board and was only like 1.9 millimeters, a teeny little fragile ports. I would hate to break one of them, so that's why I put a rubber hose on this one. And supposed to get different sensors in, including the Honeywell sensor in, hopefully by the end of the month. Uh, so uh, I'll keep you updated. This one works. Uh, post the code for this one as well. Uh, but so far it seems to be dead on and I'll continue testing and I'll keep updating it and once it's all done, like I said, I'll build the uh, the final machine once I know everything works properly. So, uh, I'll get back and just to go with some more features that I forgot to mention. So if I wanted to, I'm going to set this up, excuse me, oops. Okay, so uh, now that we have assist control, I change it to verify it. If I don't hit it, there we go. Um, this is all still the same. Um, let's see, if I wanted to park it, I could turn it off. If I just extract the arms, and it's turning off, silence the alarm. I also put an LED in there, turning off. So I wanted to start it again, I just hit uh, green button. Very simple. And peep, uh, if I wanted to tweak it down, I will manually have to adjust the peep valve. So I just turned it down to 10. Um, if I would set the uh, tidal volume and not do anything, it will blink for a while and then an alarm comes on. It will tell me, do you want to change it? Do you want to really set it? If you do, you just hit set. Okay. There you go. So breathing assist is working now since we have a pressure sensor. Um... I've been running it for days now. Doesn't seem to be a problem with it. So I'll uh, keep you guys posted. Thanks for watching.